What is a sign? A sign is a unit that communicates meaning. This could be anything from police tape, which denotes a crime scene, to the double line on a pregnancy test, which signals a positive result. Critical theory defines a sign as a communicative compound comprised of a plane of content, that is the signified, and a plane of expression, that is the signifier. This critical distinction was first identified in Ferdinand de Saussure's Course in General Linguistics. In those compiled lectures, the theorist splits the sign into two recognizable components, the sound image that is the signifier and the concept or entity that is the signified. Saussure's theories in the even earlier work of Charles Sanders Peirce are the foundation of semiotics, the formal study of signs that exemplifies and provides the lingua franca of structuralism. That's a method of analysis that explains seemingly isolated events, meanings, and phenomena in terms of structural codes or laws. Put in very basic terms, semiotics can provide this food for thought when we ponder a potato chip. Saussure assumed language was a closed system of signs, yet he acknowledged signs are arbitrary. The fact that the word potato stands for a grown tuber is merely a convention speakers in English follow. And English speakers don't always follow the same conventions. Chips in the UK are what Americans call French fries. The theorists who have followed Saussure are far less likely to view signs as closed systems, and they frequently note the ways in which the arbitrary connection between signifier and signified creates opening for slippages and escape. The structures that create meaning cannot fully control it, and the arbitrariness of convention necessarily divorces the sign from what could be considered inherent, natural, or real. According to Jean Baudrillard, signs are themselves the new reality in a world typified by simulation. This new existence, which he terms hyperreality, is epitomized by the simulacrum, an image of an image of an image with demonstrably no real. Baudrillard's famed example of what he terms the entanglement of orders of simulation is Disneyland. But we can illustrate the simulacrum by turning back to our designated snack, the chip. Regular potato chips are fried, or sometimes baked, slices of potato. Pringles, however, are the original stackable snack with a savory potato taste. The uniform edibles are made of what the company terms Pringle-shaped potato dough. For our purposes, this processed crisp is an image of an image, as it is an approximation of an actual potato chip that has a direct relationship to a real potato. Pringles come in a variety of flavors, which until 2018 included the loaded baked potato Pringle. This discontinued variety is an image of an image of an image with demonstrably no real, as there is no actual baked potato made of dough and formulated into a crisp. Like the hyper-realistic sculptural cake craze, Pringles are tangible foodstuffs that circulate freely for wide consumption precisely because they frustrate ontological fixity. It's important to note that hyperreality isn't just evident in seemingly obvious instances, like the metaverse or cryptocurrency or NFTs. It's actually part of a postmodern food chain. Which makes the memes that outline Baudrillard's four stages of simulation in terms of processed foods more than just amusing. They're actually accurate illustrations of what we consume in a mediated world.